Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today we're going to be doing a deck tech on Teja, which is one of the most powerful, maybe the most powerful hero in the Muna faction. Um, this is a hero with a pretty simple ability, but ends up leading to a lot of powerful things. We're going to be doing kind of a double header deck tech today. I'm going to be going over both this ramp version of, of uh, Teja that I call Teja Kena, and then this go wide version that's more aggressive called Teja Plants. Um, and they do two di very different things. We're going to be going over both of them today. First, let's just go over what Teja's hero ability does. It just says the first character you play each afternoon gains one boost. So it gets plus one, plus one, plus one counter on it, uh, which is a boost counter. Uh, and that leaves when it leaves the expedition zone. On the surface, you're getting that kind of one value per turn, which is pretty nice. Um, but there's a lot of ways that Teja can stretch that hero ability and make it just much stronger than one value per turn, right? So we have Anchored is the main way, and we're playing a lot of different Anchored plants. Um, in this Rant version, it does focus on it a little less overall, um, but still is utilizing that powerful uh, plus one counter every turn, especially to get you into the late game. You need that extra bit of power from the hero ability to, to help you last that long. Um, and she is the best ramp hero in Muna, uh, which is a great faction to do so because of the high end, the top end Hydra Kana here. Um, so let's look at this ramp version first, and then we'll go to the more aggressive go wide version after. So this version is based uh, entirely around Hydra Kana, which is the only eternal character in the game as of the first set beyond the gates. Um, Eternal means during rest, it doesn't go to reserve. So it's not just anchored. Anchored lets it stay one extra turn. Um, Eternal is just permanently in play, which is obviously quite powerful. Uh, it also gains four boosts when it enters, so it's going to be a four for four. But then every noon, so basically the start of every turn, it'll get four more boosts. So whatever expedition this is, is in, you'll basically permanently win that expedition. Because, of course, 4 is okay, but 8 is usually enough to win. And then from the other turn after, 12 and, and up in, in stats is basically unlosable. Um, so you will be just winning that expedition permanently with Hydra Kana. So that's quite powerful. Um, it is a huge removal magnet, of course. It's probably the most uh, demanding character in the entire game to be removed. But luckily, the rare comes with Tough X, where X is the number of plants you control. Um, and it itself is a plant, so it already has Tough 1 uh, at all times. But if we can anchor some plants, um, the nice thing is not only are we going to get those plants and their stats, and we're going to get that boost from Tasia, uh, but also they'll be in, in play for two turns. So it'll get that tough benefit from those anchored characters for additional turns, which is really, really nice to, to get. Um, so how are we gonna get to the seven mana? Of course, you could just wait until, you know, the fourth turn of the game, because um, of course you start on three, and then you go to four, five, six, seven. I guess that's fifth turn of the game. Um, you could wait till turn five and then just play it out. But I think the main way you're gonna win is by getting this out as soon as possible, especially because if you have it early, uh, your opponent won't have the mana to pay for removal, right? Because maybe if they're on 8 mana, 9 mana, they'll have extra mana to pay for that tough cost. But if you're really early getting this out on, uh, you know, when they're on 4 or 5 mana still, or probably 5 mana most of the time, then they're not really going to have the mana to remove this, which is, is going to be the biggest benefit. Um, so let's go over the different cards we're playing in this deck and how we're going to have them to, to help ramp us out. Uh, so the main ramp tools are Tiny Jin here. Tiny Jin is a two cost uh, elemental. This is an out of faction rare from Bravos, and it says, if I would leave the expedition zone while I'm boosted, put me in my owner's mana zone instead. This card doesn't have very great stats. You know, 0, 3, 0 is pretty horrible for two cost. Um, but the main thing is it goes to your mana, which is pretty nice. Normally, uh, especially in Bravos, a lot of time you have to wait till you can play it from reserve. Because as you can see, when you play it from reserve, it gains one boost. Um, and that's the main way it gets the boots on it. 
you know, you need that boost to be able to have it go to your mana. But of course we can get around that with Tasia because she will give it the boost when it enters. Um, so you can actually have it be played from hand, have a the stats of 141, which is okay, especially if you want to win in mountain. Um, you'll of course usually win in mountain there. And then you can advance and you'll be great. So uh, I think it's a great ramp card, especially in Tasia. I don't think it really works as well in the other two Muna heroes. Um, we also have Bountiful Meadow here. Bountiful Meadow uh, says the next plant you play this turn costs one less. Um, and it's a two cost landmark. This one's great as well, uh, especially because you can use it that turn. So, you know, it kind of effectively only costs one because you'll get a one cost discount if you play a plant right after it, which is really nice. Um, so you can combo it with any of these two cost plants we have here, either Sneezer Shroom or Kodama. Um, on the first turn of the game, you can play Bountiful Meadow and then play one of these for only one resource, which is really nice. Other than that, we have Aja, Aja. Uh, she is pretty high in stats um, for a four cost. She's a four, five, four, which is really good stats for a four cost. Um, and she gets each player to put the top card of their deck in the mana zone. So of course you are ramping your opponent a bit too, uh, but the upside is you're ramping into probably something much more powerful than what they're ramping into. And she has pretty great stats. So I think either way, you're pretty happy to be playing her out. Um, those are our kind of main ramp tools. We have Tiny Jin, Aja, and Bountiful Meadow. Uh, there's not a ton of ramp available yet uh, in this faction in Muna, but I think the nine cards will mean hopefully you can get two. Um, and that will be enough to ramp you out to where you want to be. Um, ideally, you play one on the first turn of the game. So you play either Tiny Jin or Bountiful Meadow. And then on the second turn, you play either another Tiny Jin and Bountiful Meadow, or you can play Aja as well now. And then on the third turn of the game, uh, when you would normally only have five mana available, you'll be able to play Hydracana. Whether that's two Bountiful Meadows, discounting it by two, or extra mana from Tiny Jin and Aja, you're going to use those to get to hopefully a turn three Hydracana um, is really the goal and what you want to do. Uh, but we are supplementing that with some bigger uh, characters as well. So we've got both Coniferal, Cone Man, and Verdant back here. These are pretty beefy plants. Um, Coniferal Cone Man is a four cost. It's a three, 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 but it gets anchored. So if we play with Tasia, it's a four for four. Um, so slightly lower stats than Aja but you get it for a whole extra turn, which is really great. Um, so it's kind of 888 worth of stats across two turns. Uh, Verdant Back is a 556, um, which is massive stats for a four cost, but it has a pretty big downside of only having Defender or having Defender unless you control two or more other plants. Defender is pretty bad. Uh, it makes it so its expedition can't advance during dusk. So it's just a straight downside, um, but you get such big stats for it, um, and especially in the late game, you can probably have these anchored plants out. If you have some Hydracanas, it synergizes pretty amazingly with Hydracana, since it'll be giving tough to Hydracana, and Hydracana will be helping to remove Defender from it, uh, so they kind of work well together. Um, it's definitely not one of our stronger units, but we're only playing it at common, so it's okay if we have to put it into our mana. Um, and when you actually get it and it doesn't have Defender, that's pretty powerful. Uh, our other characters, we have, I kind of talked about these lower cost plants. We have Sneezer Shroom, which is a 1-1-1 one, one, one that gets anchored, and Kodama, which is a 3-3-3 three, 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 but gains a sleep. Um, both of these are just played to have these cheaper plants that stay in play for multiple turns. Same with Tracana here, it's a three cost, but it also gains anchored when it enters, um, and it does get one boost at noon. All of these are just kind of cheaper plants um, that are there to stick around for multiple turns and help to turn off Defender on Vernard back and give tough to Hydracana. And of course, we need to have some amount of early pressure. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna lose the first one or two turns every time, and we really don't want that to happen. Uh, rounding out the deck, uh, we've got Aloe Vera as the last character to look at. Uh, while this is still a cheap one, you're usually going to be playing it for four because you want to pay that one resource to have it gain anchored. 
Um, so it costs three, but you have to pay one when it enters to give it that anchored, which you want to do. And then at noon, it's going to resupply, which is quite powerful. Um, basically getting card draw. And this is going to be the main way we can refill. Uh, although it's on our hand, it's refilling your reserve, which is still pretty necessary. Uh, some decks, if they're sabotaging you, making you discard or have a lot of removal, um, you will run out of cards a bit. And so you need aloe vera to be able to get you back on track there. So this is probably our best anchored plant in the deck. Um, maybe Coniferal Cone Man's close, but that's the package. It's quite different from the plants, the aggressive plants deck we're going to look at. We're playing these really expensive plants like Aloe Vera, Coniferal Cone Man, Verdant Back, and then we're playing the rare Hydrocana. It's really more focused on this top four cost or more plants and less focused on these cheaper plants down here. Um, we do have two removal cards as well. We've got Mana Reaping, which is kind of just a great all-around removal card. Um, you can just put target character or permanent in its owner's mana zone. So you're giving your opponent a free mana. I think it even looks like it's a little tiny djinn that's being forced into mana, which is pretty funny. Um, so you're giving them a free mana, but it can remove anything in the game for only three cost. Um, so for example, if your opponent has a Hydrocana, I'd be pretty happy to uh, only remove it for three um, or even... If it has tough one, um, you can remove it for four, for example, and you're still trading up a lot in mana there. Cloth Cocoon uh, is a little less broad. It can only discard fleeting anchored or asleep characters, um, but it doesn't give them any kind of advantage when you play it. It can also discard any permanent regardless of cost, which is really nice. Um, this one, yeah, these are both probably the two most flexible removal cards in the entire game right after Banishing Gate. Um, Banishing Gate is, of course, the most flexible removal. Um, it just costs four and can discard anything. Uh, but these are pretty close, and they are three costs instead of four, like Banishing Gate. Um, the only last card in the deck we haven't talked about is the Spindle. Uh, if you're up against a deck that does have really good removal, um, like Banishing Gate, for example, which is probably one of the strongest ways to remove Hydrocana, um, you might want to play one or two Spindles out first. This just gives your characters tough too, which makes it even harder for the removal to get through. Um, and it's quite powerful as well. Um, that is kind of the main ramp deck. I also have a primer that you'll see in each of these talking about um, what a lot of these cards are used for, how we're going to win, and even a bit of the things we want for uniques. So um, ideally, I think you could get some uniques that also ramp. So you could go up to 12 copies, because right now we're playing all nine cards that you can that ramp. But I think you could be even more consistent if you could play like some four or five cost ramp characters, especially if they are plants. That's even great because you can uh, get into them with Bountiful Meadow. So if you can play, if you can find some Son of Yggdrasil, Coniferal Coneman, and Verdant Back, um, any of the more expensive plants, and they also ramp, I think that's like the ideal unique. So some extra ramp cards is what I would be looking for in the unique slots there. Um, so this is a more ramp heavy, of course, big dragon version of Teja. But we also have this much more go wide version that focuses on these tiny plants and being more aggressive and low to the ground. Um, you can see this one kind of maxes out at that aloe vera. We do have hydrocana in this deck as well, um, but this is really just a major backup play. Uh, we're only playing the common, so it doesn't get that tough ability, so it is a lot easier for the opponent to remove. Um, we're most of the time going to be turning this into mana, uh, but if for some reason the game goes really, really late, then you can play the Hydrocana out, but the majority of the time the game's not going to go long enough for Hydrocana to matter. We don't have any ramp in this deck, so yeah, mostly think of Hydrocana as like a backup play. Most of the deck is focused on these really low to the ground. You can see we're playing a bunch of two cost, one cost, a few three cost, but the deck is really, really low curve um, and is just trying to go pretty wide, play two or three little plants out, and then boost them with various other uh, characters that can do so. Um, one of the downsides of decks that are really low cost is that you're going to run out of cards pretty quickly. Um, so our really all-stars of this deck are Aloe Vera that we talked about before in the other deck. We still want this. Um, you are going to run out of cards really quickly in this deck because you're playing stuff that's really cheap. Um, so yeah, you'll just burn through your cards really quickly. Instead of spending all your mana on one card, 
you're going to be sp playing you know two or three every turn so aloe vera is pretty important to get that resupply at noon and then we also have kind of mini aloe vera here we have spindle harvester is rare uh, this is only one cost um, and you don't have to even pay for the anchored so much much cheaper than the aloe vera um, but you do have to find something else to turn on its at noon resupply uh, you'll play it and it'll come in with that first boost from Tasia, so it'll come in as a 1 cost 2 one, one with Anchored, which is pretty nice. Um, but at noon, it only will resupply if it has 2 or more boosts. And so it's not enough just to have that 1 boost from Tasia. you need to play one of your many other cards that can give it that secondary boost. Um, and we are playing 9 other cards that can do that. Starting with these 2 new rares, we have Ogin. This is probably my favorite rare in the deck. Um, it can lead to some absolutely gross things where you play a bunch of anchored stuff out uh this enters and give all your plants one boost and that boost is basically doubled if they're anchored right because you'll get it that turn and the turn after so if you can go spindle harvesters into sneezer shroom and then play ogan uh you're not just giving two boosts with him you're giving kind of four boosts because they're getting it the turn after so ogan's really really powerful um he's definitely one of your best closers in the late game uh, when you have, like I said, two, three, or sometimes even four plants out that have been there, get anchored, and then you can play Ogin. Um, you know, if you play him from hand next turn, you can play him again from reserve and just anchor or give them all boost again. He's just really powerful. Uh, his stats are pretty good at two cost. 2 one, one is already okay. It's a bit under uh, curve. As soon as he gives something one boost, he's effectively a 3-2-2. Uh, which is now above curve for a two cost. And if you're giving two plants a boost, he's a two cost for a four, three, three, which is way, way above curve for a two cost. So um, pretty powerful rare here. We also have Chiron. Uh, he can't do as much of a high roll, but he's a bit more consistent. Um, he says up to two car target characters each gain one boost. So uh, he can target himself. So let's just call him uh, a... 2 one, one just like Ogin, um, because he's usually a one zero zero. but like I said, he can target himself. Um, so he's basically going to give one character a boost uh, if he's not targeting himself. If you do have two things with Anchored out, you'll probably want to target them instead. Um, I definitely think he's a bit weaker than Ogin, of course, because, uh, yeah, he can only hit up to two things max, whereas Ogin could high roll like crazy and hit like four plants. Um, but he's pretty necessary to have because we really want to turn on those Spindle Harvesters. Uh, a pretty amazing first turn play is to play the Spindle Harvesters. Um, they enter as that 2-1-1 one, one with Tasia, and then follow up with your last two mana with Chiron. Um, now they become a 3-2-2 two, two with Anchored, which is already really powerful, and they're going to resupply at noon. Um, and then Chiron will be another 2-1-1. One, one. You can often even double advance by doing this um, and start resupplying the turn after. You'll even have that Chiron to play on four mana. Um, so it's pretty powerful. Our other anchored characters, we're still playing that Sneezer Shroom. Uh, we're still playing that Kodama. Uh, we're still playing the Jerkana. All of these are just pretty standard, powerful commons for Tasia. Uh, they're all, yeah, they come in and they give themselves anchored for free. So they get much bigger benefit from Tasia's ability and from any of the boosts we're giving out in this deck. Um, we are playing this card, Yangsu Verdant Weaver as well. He's pretty high stats when you get him off. You know, he's just a common, but he can come in as a 3-5-5 five, five, because if you control two or more plants, he gains two boosts, um, which is pretty powerful. So he'll be a 2-5-5 five, five total uh, if you get him in and you have those two plants off. Otherwise, you'll probably just put him in mana. Um, but later in the game, he's pretty huge. I mean, 3 for a 5-5-5 five, five, five is, is a, not really possible in any other characters I could think of off the top of my head. So... Um, definitely way above curve when he gets off and just a common and um, we're playing the same removal so cloth cocoon and mana reaping these are kind of the standard removal uh for muna i think most mona decks should be on three cloth cocoon three mana reaping you need at least these six removal cards to be able to um yeah, win and not insta lose i should say to a lot of bigger threats um, we're playing those three Bountiful Meadows still. They're probably even better in this deck. Of course, the ramp is key to the uh, Dracana, the High Dracana deck, but we are playing even more plants in this deck. You know, we're playing 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 plants here, plus the High Dracana, so up to 18 plants. Um, so really great, and especially since we're more low to the ground, we're pretty happy to get that free ramp. 
Uh, the last card is Nurture. This is another kind of boost two things. Um, this one's not attached to a body, so it's not quite as good as Ogun and Chiron. Um, I think they're stronger, but this one's only a common, so pretty happy to just use a common slot for it. Uh, up to two target characters, each gain one boost. Pretty simple. Um, sometimes you're only going to get one boost from this because you just want to put it um, on the first turn of the game, go Spindle Harvesters into Nurture. That's fine. Um, you know, you're only getting... It's pretty bad value because it's basically two for a 1-1-1. One, one, one. But you're getting that that counter doubled since it's anchored, so it's not the worst. Um, my cat is uh, trying to have some fun today. Um, and then, you know, it only costs one from reserve, which is pretty great. Um, I think that's the main advantage, right? Is these still cost two from reserve. This only costs one. When you get a one cost for a 2-2-2, two, 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 that's, that's definitely above curve. So I'm pretty happy to do that. Uh, those are the two decks. You can see this one's much more aggressive, really low to the ground, um, giving out boosts to all your plants, and really trying to have this wide board with two or three plants that are all buffed up. Whereas this version focuses on ramping with Aja, Tiny Jin, Bountiful Meadow into this massive rare Hydrocana bomb. Uh, there's two very different ways to play it. I think you could do either one you want. Um, this one I think is maybe more consistent because the ramp version does rely on finding those ramp pieces and finding the rare Hydrocana, so it's a little more uh, draw dependent. Whereas this one, you're playing a lot of redundancy. Um, you know, you have both Aloe Vera and Spindle Harvesters to be able to get that resupply at noon. You have Ogun, Chiron, and Nurture to all get stuff boost. You have plenty of nice uh, plants that you can anchor and big stuff you can buff with Yang Su. I think this is probably the more consistent one if you just want to play uh, boost deck. But I think the ramp version could high roll a bit more and maybe um, yeah lead to some more powerful wins. The uniques in this deck, I think, are also more flexible, where in the ramp version, I said I'd probably look for just uniques that can ramp. In this one, I think any kind of good plant or boost synergy unique is nice. In my dream world, I would really love some Ganeshas that only cost five. Ganesha is uh, a character that says when it enters, your enter the battlefields trigger again. Um, so anything with the arrow, so you would get to refresh anchored, you would get to refresh these plants, uh, boost, it, basically everything except Kodama. Uh, everything else is an, is an arrow. So you'd get all of these anchored again, all of these boosts. It's really strong, but rare Ganesha costs seven, which is just way too expensive in this deck. Um, you know, of course, we're playing Hydrocana, but it's a common, so you're not really using a rare slot. And also, it's, you know, less synergy based. You can just kind of slam it on the board and it's strong. Where Ganesha, you have to also play other stuff first. So I think rare Ganesha is too weak at seven cost, um, but I think if you can get some unique ones that only cost five, that would be like my dream, my dream uniques. But really this deck is pretty flexible with what uniques you can play. Uh, anyways, let me know in the comments below uh, what deck you're playing, if it's going to be Tasia. If you have any questions about these two deck lists, uh, you can check out the links to these both and I'll be updating them if any cards change or if I add to the primer. But thank you so much for watching.